Welcome, everyone, to Tuesday Night Luke Live Online. I'm Father James DeLucio, back in my room and office. It's an all-in-one, and I'm very pleased to be back with you after my two weeks of vacation. Thank you so much for your well wishes and your prayers. I had a wonderful time with my family, visiting my parents, my sister, my nieces and nephews, and great nieces and nephews, and godchildren. It was a beautiful time. So, here we go, picking up where I left off two weeks ago, which was Luke chapter 8. This is Luke chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. It's a little long pericope, but it's filled with drama, because tonight is the story of Jesus and the Gerasene demoniac. Now, we left off last time with Jesus calming the storm at sea, so Jesus and the disciples are still there in the Sea of Galilee. But then they sailed to the territory of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when Jesus came ashore, a man from the town who was possessed by demons met him. For a long time, he had not worn any clothes, and he lived among the tombs. When he saw Jesus... He cried out and fell down before him, and in a loud voice he shouted, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had ordered the unclean spirits to come out of the man. They had taken hold of him many times. And he used to be bound in chains and shackles as a restraint. But he would break his bonds and be led by the demons into deserted places. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they pleaded with him not to order them to depart into the abyss. Now there was a herd of swine feeding on the hillside, and they pleaded with him to order them to enter the swine, and he let them. The demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd ran down the steep hill toward the bank and into the river where they were drowned. When the swineherd saw this, they ran away and they reported the incident into the town and throughout the countryside. People came out to see what had happened and as they approached Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at Jesus' feet and they were struck with fear, for he was fully clothed and in his right mind. Yes, fear seized them all. Those who had witnessed it told them how the possessed man had been saved. The entire population of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them for they were filled with great fear. So he, he got into a boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had come out asked to remain with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Go into the town and recount what God has done for you. The man went off and reported throughout the whole town what Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's actually one of my favorite stories from childhood, but even now as an adult because of the great drama of it. And to think that this poor man, not clothed, living in tombs, being chained and shackled and breaking out and running away and getting back again all that time. And he's so possessed that the demons speak for him. Don't, don't do anything to us, Jesus, until they sense that he is who he is, and then they plead with him not to order them to enter into the abyss, but into the swine. 
Now, what do we make of all of that? This has nothing to do with animal rights or Jesus' um, disregard for, for animals. But what it does uh, indicate is a number of things. Remember what we said about the demons in the Bible. The demons are explanations uh, for anything that's an offense to God. And this man is suffering, so it was looked at as demonic there. Um, it may literally be a kind of possession because, as scholars say, uh, the, the reality of Jesus in, in here among us would brought, brought out the, the, the dynamic of evil and everything that is against the goodness, the truth that is Jesus. And then it was another way of also explaining the unexplainable. So they're able to recognize Jesus because of the difference between the fullness of light that he is and the fullness of darkness um, that they are. But the, the issue of the swine is that this community, they were not uh, of the Jewish tradition. They were pagans. They were Gentiles. That's why they were raising pigs. The Jews have nothing to do with pigs, neither raising them because they would not eat them. They were considered unclean animals. So this was another whole kind of industry. Uh, the, the Jewish uh, population, including the apostles, would be very, very amused for the fact that Jesus has um, let the demons enter into the pigs because for them it was like, oh, good riddance anyway. But the reason why it all occurred it was making a very emphatic statement. It was a kind of judgment on the Gerasenes. First, their faith isn't open to the reality of Jesus. They're afraid of him, uh, and they ask him to leave, which is a bit outstanding. Why weren't they, astounding rather, why wouldn't they be happy? Why wouldn't they be happy? Somebody in their midst has returned to sanity, wearing clothes in his right mind. But... Uh, by the swine going into the Lake of Gennesaret or the Sea of Galilee, same thing, their livelihood is gone. And there's a great statement here that we can go about our livelihoods, but if we're not questioning its import, if we're not questioning um, its morality and its values, and we're just going about our business while people are suffering, why did they neglect the guy so long? Was the best that they could do for him was put him in chains? and shackles, uh, there's consequences. There's, there's true, true consequences. We have to look at what we do, where we work, why we work, what are the, the benefits, where are the opportunities for the kingdom to be celebrated in that work, or do we compartmentalize our lives from work to faith to church to home to leisure? So it's a great statement of the interconnectedness of every aspect of our life if we're truly grounded in Jesus and in our faith. There's many other points of view and ways to enter into this pericope. Feel free to share them in the comments uh, if you wish. Uh, and of course, on the online, there's lots of other commentaries and sermons on this as well. But thank you for hearing my perspective. And thanks for joining me. It's good to be with you all again. Tune in on Friday for a new Young at Heart. And I'm still deciding what I'm going to share. We finished the Ring of the Nimberlingen, the Ring des Nimberlingen. I love trying to pronounce foreign words. I'm sure I don't do it very well, but it's a lot of fun. But we're going back to some English folktales um, next Friday. God bless everybody. Have a great night and a wonderful week.